Hello, everyone. Welcome to my session. I'm Albert, the VP Engineering of, uh, from Stata Cyber. Uh, it's my great pleasure to get invited uh, to give a talk uh, in the Graph Plus AI Summit organized by TechGraph. I think this is an awesome venue to share the idea regarding the Graph Plus AI topic. In my today's presentation, I'm going to talk about using graph machine learning to detect complex attacks in the open XDR context. XDR, the extended detection response, is the market segment defined by Gartner uh, for security. It's a recently hot topic. In Gartner 2019, the top nine security trend report, at least a number two hot topic for security. In 2020, the same report, at least as number one hot topic in the top nine hot topics in the security. So in this talk, I'm going to give the uh, high level background and see why we need OpenXDR and why the graph machine learning is a way we can, in this domain, to detect the complex attack and solve security issue better. The digital asset are targeted by attackers. That's well known, right? So in the traditional business, there's a lot of traditional business right now go through the digital transformation and uh, to digitalize uh, all the information uh, to present in a cyberspace. Also, the, the, the new internet-based business is already um, very much data-driven. So data, the digital asset, become a universal kind of tool we can capture what's going on in, in the real world. And then through AI and machine learning engines, then we can make important business decisions to enable the business. So a lot of business today leverage on data. And data also is a trust from customers to us as a business. Because customer gives the data, then they assume uh, the vendor is going to uh, protect the data and the, maintain the privacy and also confidentiality for the data. Unfortunately, data is also very appealing uh, for attackers. The attackers has been uh, kind of long, uh, use different techniques to demonstrate their power for launching attack, but they are also searching for a business model which can uh, launch attack, not only for fun, but also for profit. So the data leakage and, and the ransomware has become an important way for the attackers to kind of monetize um, their attack and, uh, and the create their revenue, right? And also the, the, crypto, the cryptocurrency, like a big coins and, and the other coins have given attacker a untraceable way to get money with, without get, like a guy hunted. So because of this, actually, uh, there's a great attention, like attention between on business, we, we need to collect more data and, and use more data, but the attacker um, may kind of want to target for the data. It has been a lot of uh, data breaches going on, right? Uh, this uh, is, is one uh, kind of figure is from the Information is Beautiful website. You can go to the website, get the same figure, All right? So it shows the world largest data breaches. You can see there are tons of breaches happening today. And also, like uh, as I mentioned, ransomware has become another way attacker uh, monetize through data. For example, Colonial Pipeline, right? It kind of stopped the, the gas, caused the gas, the gas shortage in the East Coast for a while is caused by the ransomware and the, and the Colonial Pipeline indeed paid the attacker for the ransom. It shows the business model works. Even so much attack incentive, actually, um, according to the, the Fire IM trend report, right? Attack devout time is still pretty long. And usually attack can like on average six days, two months without no, notice or, or discovered uh, by, the, uh, by the company is they are under the attack. This is contradict to actually the, the business might already have a SOC in place, the SOC security operating center. And uh, there's a lot of security analysts busy look at the screen and look at a lot of alert. But sometimes it's too many. They get alert fatigue. The wolf will come, but at the end, they may uh, miss the lion. 
So one example is like a, like in a real custom environment, we we found like one tool actually reported ninety thousand alert per day. Think about ninety thousand. If I have an alert in the thirty second, take a look. It requires a team of thirty two SOC analysts to work twenty four hour a day. That is not realistic if you're in the sleep. It needs sixty. It needs ninety six SOC analysts work in three shift to cover that. Let's show that the problem is a real problem, right? The alert fatigue. And because alert fatigue, because uh, it's so much uh, uh, like alert and it causes the security analyst incentive, when some real thing happen, it's harder to detect. For example, in the both well-known uh, like data breaches like a target, it leaked 10 million credit cards and Equifax leaked one third of US citizens' social security number. In both cases, actually, if you carefully follow the news, the security team there actually know something. But what they don't know is how important something they found. Because after all, for a big company, every day there are security, like, like, like some security attack happening, every day there's something. But what they don't know is like, like, like in that day, as a thing will cause huge data breaches. And even the CEO stepped down because of that. That is to show, right, for secure operation, um, it's not just a detection problem. Of course, we want to detection. We want to know and search all the suspicious behaviors. But that, that largely is not enough. We also need a rank function to know uh, what's the, the, the ranking of top risk for the company. When we work with many like customer, uh, they are CIO, the chief information officer, and the CISO, the chief security officer, is, is always asked whether you can show me what's the top five risk for my company for today. That become a, 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 a critical business ask from the customer. Next, I'm going to show um, this is important, but also is challenging. Actually, if I, I show the search and the run keyword, it may make you think about the search engine. In the search engine years before, they also have the similar problem, right? So before the Google, there are lots of search engine to do like a search and it return the result, but the relevance sometimes low, the rank not good. Then Google fundamentally through the page ranking algorithm improve the, uh, the rank, right? So make the search much more useful. We believe security needed the same innovation. And, in, and also a hint is a page ranking is a graph-based algorithm. So that's, so that's why I think this is a good topic for, for this menu. So next I'm going to talk about why uh, this is a, a harder problem. So suppose there's a DevOp laptop is compromised. You may find it runs some suspicious script or PowerShell. Then if you, uh, you put yourself in a security, SOC analyst, security analyst perspective, you must think about how serious attack is. Depend on how serious it is in the report, the, 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 the acceleration, right? Whether in the report to CISO or whether himself can handle that with simple response. Unfortunately, this question is pretty hard. So for example, one possibility is uh, there's a large scale attack, like, like a large scale phishing campaign or some large scale bottleneck or malware is going on. It happened to uh, uh, like infect uh, this machine, but not target for this company. The attack also like infect many machines from a lot of companies. Then from that perspective, the SOC, the right decision is to clean up this laptop, done, right? There's no further action probably need. On the other hand, there could be a different scenario. It could be still the same laptop get hacked, compromised, and also the laptop have exactly the same behavior. That's why we get a similar alert. But this time, it's different. The, the attacker is targeted attack to this company's critical data. Ooh, just like uh, think about the Equifax, think about the target. That is it's something the CISO, everyone should know. And the, actually the attack might not start from here, maybe start from so through some phishing and compromise the secretary machine and use secretary machine to launch a network attack against this DevOps machine 
And from this type of machine, they get some important credential, then they move to the cloud side of the company and data center and launch more attack. And finally, they want to target the, 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 the company's important critical database and the customer data. Look at this figure a little more. Apparently, if this is happening, immediately this is a much more serious threat, right? But in order to figure it out, only have the information from this type of machine, it's not enough. You need a broader context. You need to know what's happening before and after, then changing the behavior to build the context to know what's really going on. And also, in order to build the context in this example, you can also see it needs more than one security approach. It needs email security, it needs network security, it needs endpoint security, it needs cloud security. It needs multiple, probably multiple products data to in order to, to, to stitch in together to know this context. And this shows the difficulty of the problem. So number one, the context matter. We need to build a context. We need stitching things together to know what's going on. Second, in order to build a context, we need fusion signals from multiple security segments. That's not easy today. That needs an open XDR. I'm going to like show you in the next like more. So why open XDR? Right. So let me to introduce what uh, is uh, the uh, definition for detect response XDR and open XDR for you. So first, for any defense strategy, prevention usually is the first line. It's just in your home, you'll need to install door and lock. That's prevention technology. And similar for a city, you might build a city wall or like country, you also can build a wall in the border. That's always a prevention technology. But that is not enough, especially as big as city, for example, New York City. You need a detection response, which means you need a policeman. You need someone to investigate something is happening, then have detected, and then find what is happening and response to it. So that's going to be data driven. So the detect response is an important security strategy we need to play. And then uh, in the container I mentioned, uh, they defined a security segment in the market called the Extended Detection Response, XDR. Um, essentially, that is a try to correlate multiple type of data. And initially, this term is coined uh, by Palato. Palato is try to compete with EDR vendors. The EDR is the, the early like vendors uh, uh, like employed as a detection response strategy that's called EDR, endpoint detection response. And Palato want to compete with EDR vendors and invent XDR to see EDR may not be enough, you need to also correlate with the other data. But in their definition, the other data means the same vendor's data, means the Palato's all other two can work together in harmony uh, uh, to, to offer the protection, it is good. But, but another uh, side is, is also not enough. Fundamentally, in Stata Cyber, we want to push it to extreme. We want to call it everything detection response to redefine the XDR in a border scope. That requires all the data from all the vendors can be ingested. That's why we need an open ecosystem. We believe that's so important because for security, actually, is a frequent market. We have so many vendors then it's we in order to state information together to, to discover the context I mentioned before, we need the open XDR. So that actually is um, uh, it, it is related to this two fact fragmentation problem in the security today. And uh, that is a uh, kind of uh, um, mentioned uh, in another conference in another talk. In the R in the RSC conference, one of the largest security conference, 2019 keynote, the Pat Gilsinger, the ex CEO from VMware, gave the, his keynote speech three things the security industry is talk about and but it should be. In that talk, he mentioned one data point. He mentioned when he was in meeting with CEO of Citibank, he asked how many security vendors you guys use. The answer is a daunting. 
is 250. What a complexity. In the same meeting, ask how many server vendor we use, so probably two. Uh, so how many network gear vendor we use, including wireless, where mostly probably is three or four. But security shows it's quite a fragment of market, 250. That shows we need an open ecosystem to gather the data together to protect a company because right now, no single vendor can offer the full protection for security yet. And also because customers already deploy so many tools, in order to return their investment, they need to um, consider how to uh, kind of put the, the, all the vendor's data together. That's the open XDR. Then let's look at the first Stella Cyber so approach to, to deal with the OpenXDR challenge, right? So uh, we call it a data or machine learning journey to instant. Because in security, we have fundamentally many type of data potentially contribute to the context building and know the importance of a text work and better ranking so that I can focus on important things. First is network. When network, data is important one. You already have IDS, Information Detection System, NTA, Network Traffic Analytic, NDR, Network Detection Response. All these tools can help us to know something endpoint cannot tell us because after all, in any company, there's printers, IP phones, um, like IP cameras. There's lots of devices. Maybe it's IoT type that cannot be instrumented by agent. Endpoint might not have full coverage. Network data is still very important. Second, endpoint. Right, like an endpoint detection response or like an endpoint protection platform, like antivirus, that all give very important data to know what's going on in the company. It's a machine. Third, the company may already have a lot of data integrations with SaaS, right? like Office 365, J Suite, or like a Salesforce, a lot of web apps, and also a lot of API integration inside the company. And also, the company may already partially move to cloud. So my, my already use AWS, Azure, GCP, or Oracle, or other cloud. Then they might need to get the, the AWS Cloud Trio, CloudWatch, Guard Duty, or some type of data to know what's going on in their cloud from cloud vendors view. That's important data as well. And then they also may have vulnerability scanner, like a tenable Rapid7 to scan the vulnerabilities to know uh, their security hygiene. They also may have identity-based tools such as Active Directory, Okta, or any single sign-on or like a zero trust tools to know the identity and the policy. So all the data is important, but they might speak in different languages. In start a cyber way, we kind of uh, first normalize the data and enrich the data to make the data more homogeneous so that we can let the data language become the, uh, the same so that it can easily fit into the machine learning engine uh, to make sense of it. And then the machine learning engine, the detection engine may detect an alert. The alert might further go through XDR kill chain. It's a my as an industry standard like a MITRE attack framework compliant tool to know the st stage of the attack, to know the tactic techniques and the process of the attack so that we can legalize um, the attack to know the, po the positions in the of the, the pieces. And then through the instant correlation, correlation machine learning, another machine learning tool, then we want to be able to recover what's really going on, who is, who is really behind the scenes, what's the big picture for the attack. Only if we know that, we can launch the response more intelligently, because if we know it's Joker, then probably we should need to throw the Batman into the battle. Similar to any disease, right? It's best we do not only based on symptom uh, to, to cure the symptom. Best we know the root cause and then have a systematic treatment. So from the detection machine learning perspective, uh, the, um, the one fundamental thing is very important to make the machine learning really have good result is when the make sure machine learning model fit with data tightly, which means the right model for right data, fundamentally capture data intrinsic nature. Because the XDR, we have kind of different type of 
data. Then we also need to use multiple type of model to do the detection. <coughs> like, a, like for example, here is a couple of example, right? For the we use a, because in order to cover XDR, all the different uh, attack cases, we need to use a, a large set of machine learning algorithms from unsupervised learning to supervised learning to adaptive learning. In unsupervised learning, we need to use different models. For example, we, we needed to use time series analysis to understand the, something compared to the own history, like for example, the power usage from my home compared history. Then no, hey, one day since I use too much, then it's out there. Second, for example, we want to comply, compare different employees in the company to, to, to know maybe the people can group behavior as group by the group, then there are some other layers. Third is like a, from the graph perspective, not only we care about uh, the data and, and we also care about their relationship, like, like people's relationship, machine's relationship and so on. So, so then the normal relationship will reflect. For supervised learning, we, we, we need to label and pre-train the model and then use classifiers to detect things such as like we use it for DNS tunneling, the, the DGA domain de de detection through deep learning and so on. And also because secure analysts may have their preference, when they gradually learn their preference, when they adapt to learning to achieve that. So I, I, I talk about the detection a little bit. Now I can't talk about the correlation, which need, need even more like a graph perspective in the machine learning. So fundamentally, the correlation machine learning, we need to build the context, as I mentioned. We believe the context is a cure for the alert fatigue. But how do we present context? Actually, context is easy to be presented as a graph. Here is an example, right? For example, the Alex going to send email, attach a report, and send to exchange, and then land into the mailbox in his colleague. The Bob uh, like opened this report through Excel, but unfortunately, this is a, a weaponized document, is attacked, then when, once it open, it also open a PowerShell and launch an attack. So this can be illustrated on the graph relationship, and on Charlie didn't open it, then not infected yet. So as you can see, right, but, for this context, we can encode it in a graph. And then once we can encode the context in a graph, then we want to leverage on the graph representative learning, the graph machine learning, to learn the context out of the graph so that we can know the attack context. That's the fundamental approach we are taking. So there's different graph machine learning techniques, right? More traditionally, we have the influence propagation, for example, Tina analyze. If we see the untrusted input, if we see the untrusted input, right? So then, then, we, then it might propagate uh, uh, through the program and finally to the SQL statement, then boom, launch SQL injection. That's one type of information flow propagation. And also page ranking fundamentally is, a, is a propagated influence but by the links between pages. And the, the, the deep work is a new, like a deep learning algorithm, also leverage on random work to sample the topological information and the can turn it into the deep learning model. That's one of the graph embedding techniques. So then graph embedding is, a, is, is kind of a good tool to use um, to, to help to get the topological information, encode it, and then convert to a vector space because we, for machine learning guys, we all know the uh, you know, vector space is easier to use any machine learning algorithm to classification or find out there or do anything we want. Then the third tool is the graph neural network, right? It's a new development is try to see uh, like uh, the, the graph have topology information, but then topology information can be encoded into the neural network layers. That like A, then I have, have the neighbor B, C, D. Then we construct the neural network on assembly what's going on and the train that way, right? So um, that is all good graph techniques, right? With those techniques, then fundamentally, we want to be able to uh, learn from the detection result to the instant, which represents the underlying of the attack, not just a symptom anymore. It represents the root cause from graph ML. And then the first thing it's going to do is, is help to group the alert together. And also once the group together, it also helps to rank uh, the instant 
with a group of activity so that we can give score uh, through the graph learning and, and then to, to know the rank so, so that we can know what's important. And also for each instant, then we can also have the, some detail to illustrate. So this is to show um, like a, uh, like a, like, like in the product, we can rank the top instant, right? Then through the top instant, then we can know what is the top thread the company the variable. Then we can drill down to one and to know the graph context as I mentioned, because the graph is a good language to describe the context. So then we can see, hey, then this machine may attack the, uh, this machine like one dollar twenty five, and then it further attack some other machine in the machine. There's uh, some registry going on, and then install some key, and so on. So we can get this context, and also be able to also show that you know you know more human readable language. So with this tool, then people can click and understand the context. So I majorly focus on two things: ranking and the context. That really helped to solve the security challenge problem today. So then in conclusion, right? So as I mentioned, digital assets become important when, but, uh, but the attack are, are often, we, in order to, to solve the attack, we need to solve the other fatigue problem. And the, the rank actually know the context and the rank through context is so important for that. On one side, we need the open XDR to get an open ecosystem, to get all the vendors data, to be able to stitch things together. The second, with graph machine learning, is a good way to encode and the learning the context so that we can rank on, con on the context well. And with both, then we can uh, finally we want to achieve like a 10 to 100 boost for security operation efficiency against top risk, so that people can, as a CISO or CEO, they can quickly know what is the top risk for my company and have peace of mind that those uh, cases get handled. That's my talk. Thank you.